Thank you. So, how do we estimate the vertical stress? It's pretty easy, actually, right? It's just the integral from, you know, where the, our coordinate system points into the Earth. So, if we have the surface of the Earth, the z direction points into the Earth, perpendicular to the surface. So this is zero. So it's just the integral from zero to the, whatever depth you're interested in z of the density function times gravity. Okay. Now you notice there's you know the density is a function of z, um, and it also should be noted that this density is really, let's say, um, the density of z is what I'm going to call the bulk density. And what I mean by that is, re remember that in the Earth we have porous rocks or sand or whatever, and after some small depth, then those pores are filled with fluid, right? So when we actually look at a piece you know, a little characteristic piece of the Earth, then we have some solid particles, whether they be sand or rock or whatever. And then in, in between, we have fluid. And so the total density is the density of the rock times its volume fraction plus the density of the fluid times its volume fraction, okay? And that's the bulk density, okay? And that's actually what we measure when we have density logs. We can't separate, in a density log, which I'll show you an example of in a second, we, we don't separate the fluid from the, uh, from the solid. In offshore areas, we have to correct for the water, right? So in this case, we'll have a surface that has some water. Our coordinate is still z, which is now we have this measure, which is zw, which is the height of the water. Right? So then, water, the density of water we, we typically assume is constant. Right? So we don't need to do an integration here because the density of the water is constant. So we have the density of water times gravity times the depth of the water. This gives us the overburden, or I guess I should mention that's another another uh, name for what we're talking about here. We talk about the overburden pressure. So the overburden associated with the water, and then we have to perform the integration f starting from ZW to whatever depth we're interested in, Z. So a couple rules of thumb. Uh, well, the density of water is is defined as one gram. I mean, well, I mean, one gram per centimeter is uh, the density of water, right? It gives basically the, the definition of a gram. So th this increases at a rate of roughly well of 10 megapascal per kilometer, or roughly 
0.44 psi per foot. And the density of rock is 2.3 grams per centimeter. This is obviously, this is um, an average of, you know, obviously not all rocks have the same density, but certainly in uh, most sediment, sedimentary basins, you're going to see on average uh, a rock density of 2.3 grams uh, per cubic centimeter. And that increases at a rate of 23 megapascal per kilometer, or conveniently, one psi per foot. So, on land, it, it's really easy to estimate what the pore pressure is, or the overburden pressure, rather, not the pore pressure, the overburden pressure. It's really easy to estimate because it's roughly one psi per foot. So, at 8,000 feet, it's what? 8,000 psi. Right. So, the way we actually get these density functions are from density logs that we measure when we're drilling. And the density logs are typically only taken at some depth below the surface. And the surface is defined as, you know, the, the rock surface, you know, where you start drilling. So you also have the seafloor above that. So that's why in, in this plot you'll see that, uh, and I really, really don't like the way they plotted this because this is, this is what, you know, if you, I always hate, this is just a little bit of an aside, please don't label your plots depth versus density or something like that because it's not a fight it's not like two people boxing each other right it's 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 depth as a function when you read a plot like this what the way you read it in words is you say depth as a function of density that makes it sound like we're changing the density and re and measuring the depth right which is not what we're doing here we're changing the depth by drilling and measuring the density so this plot actually sh should be reversed, right? So, I mean, this is the way it's in the book, and I, I really don't know why they plot it like this, but it doesn't make sense, right? So, um, so anyway, and also it makes it awkward to read, right? I mean, here we know the density, uh, the density of water, which would be in the sea, is one gram per cubic centimeter. Right? They also mislabeled this plot. That should be gram per cubic centimeter. Okay. Well, there's all kinds of things wrong with this plot. <laughs> they, they also plot on the left-hand side feet and uh, you know, on the on the ordinate axis, feet, and on the abscissa, grams per centimeter. So they're mixing units on top of everything else. Anyway, uh, so now that I've co quit complaining about the plot, let's talk about what it what it's showing. So the the black squiggly lines are you know actually the density logs that are recorded, and they start at some depth bef below the seafloor, which the seafloor is right here. And so in between, they, this is just an extrapolation uh, because there's actually no data there. So it's just a, a best guess, if you will. Okay. And so when we integrate this, what do we do? What is it? What does integration mean in terms of when you have a curve or a plot? What is, what is it? It's the area under the curve, right? But again, because this plot is messed up, it's, it's, it's the area to the left of the curve. Right? So it's this area. Okay, so in this little region right here,
what do you expect the integral, the cumulative integration to look like? Like if I'm going to plot the curve, what, what should it look like? Straight line, right? Because it's, it's a, yeah, a straight line. So, you know, using their crazy way of plotting, it would be something like that. And then the rest of it, you know, it's, it's some function, so we don't know exactly what it's going to look like. But we can see it's going to monotonically increase, right? It's always going to be increasing. It's never going to be decreasing. So this is what, what you get. <coughs> and now they've switched to using consistent units. So you see that the, the depth, the, the overburden uh, stress increases with depth, according to that. 